mine fires and explosions in U.S. coal mines have accounted for the loss of precious lives and millions of dollars in damage. In many situations, prompt actions by mine personnel have led to the safe evacuation of miners subsequent to a fire or explosion. But even in these events, the mine is left full of gas and smoke, and dedicated mine rescue teams are called upon to explore and recover the mine. Who are these people that don breathing apparatuses and delve deep into the darkness of underground mines? Why do these men and women, heroes if you will, take on these challenges and freely give of themselves? What technology have we developed to enhance their safety? All of these questions and more will be answered as you view this video. The mine rescue members you see and hear in this video are professionals. They are the heartbeat of the industry today, but as they retire from their positions, we need to find replacements for them. The coal industry is in search of tomorrow's heroes. We talk in terms of MSHA and the state being regulators. Well, they're not regulators, they're support personnel. They're here to help us uh, do what we do to be the safest operations we can be. We provided guidance and oversight for the mine recovery efforts. Um, we have uh, several sub subject matter experts throughout our organization. They were fighting the fire at the time I received the call. They asked for our assistance. And of course then I contacted other folks within our center to respond, uh, the gas van, uh, our mobile laboratory and we went to Brewston, got everything together and started this direction. Of all the places for the mine to have a fire, this was one of the more difficult ones to deal with. The actual rescue team technology, breathing apparatus, things like that, has not changed that much over the years, but the support technology has come a long way. Now this is the first time I've seen them pump the foam in from the boreholes. But evidently that worked good too. Not real familiar with the foam that they use, but it seemed to do a pretty good job. But uh, to put it inside the mines through the borehole, and then it expands and it smothers out the bar because the way that uh, they've got it set up to work. And it, it done a pretty good job to help them put the bar out. At that time, we talked about air locking into the mine. We talked about remote seals. Uh, we talked about inert foam, which was something that was just new, it was tested at NIOSH. And after all the considerations um, in working with the company and, and with other MSHA and state folks, they developed a plan, and the plan was basically to drill some holes into the area, determine the extent of the fire, put some inert gas into the area, right on the fire area. On December 28th, we started injecting nitrogen. At, uh, it's injected about negative 322 degrees with the intent of taking all the oxygen out of the environment. And this is a view into one of our boreholes. And what we were looking for in this was, this, was there any sign of fire? Since the fire was at the bottom of the slope, it was going to be critical that they're able to get to the bottom of the slope and see whether it's, it had caved in or there was any more problems from the fire. And that's where the robot came in. The ice especially is very slick and where the you know, ice pick shoes uh, that you know, created and that was an obstacle. Uh, 700 feet is a long ways when you have to walk up and down and you got 35 pounds on your back. It just, uh, that's, that's an obstacle in itself, you know. It uh, surprised me on the information that they found out just by using the robot, sending it down the slope and where they could check the atmosphere out and look at the mine, see whether it's safe for the mine rescue teams to go in. And knew that slope area could be, you know, a very bad situation. Uh, with that, you didn't really have to put the human factor in there, you know, with the technology of, of the cameras and everything like that. That's, that just gave you a heads up of what you had uh, facing you when you got to that point. They have a uh, state-of-the-art chromatograph uh, that's manned 24-7. Uh, that gives us an instant reading of the, the mine gases as far as uh, from a bottle sample type a standpoint to compare those results with what the infrared equipment's reading. They were able to replace the temporary uh, controls with permanent seals and now the fire 